Hey, this is John Owens with Frame Voyager. I have received a ton of questions about how I film with Blackmagic's underwater and which underwater housing I use. A lot of people use the Nauticam housings, but I uh, <laughs> didn't really want to pay the price for that. So I found this company, Salty Surfing House in Australia that custom makes their housings from aluminum billet and CNC machines it. So um, I'm going to show you how it works, how I set it up and uh, show you some footage from it. So uh, let's get started. In this video, I will be showing you my setup for the Pocket 4K underwater housing, the equipment you need, and also some general tips on getting good footage underwater. I have been able to test this setup in multiple locations, while snorkeling, in a pool, and while scuba diving in Devil's Den, in a poorly lit environment. So let's first talk about how to set up the salty surfing underwater housing. All right, so the first step is to open up this back plate, which has eight screws that you take out that holds it into place. All right, so as you can see inside the camera, it's got all these different little buttons that you can push down and things to help turn on the camera and adjust the settings while underwater. And I'll show those how those work when we get it set up. So the first thing you do, get it opened up, take your black magic out of the cage. There is a special battery, which is over here. Actually, it's right here. Specifically, you have to get this this battery, which I've included a link in the description if uh, you decide to get this cage and want it, or this uh, housing and get it. It uh, actually shows you the time remaining on the battery, but it attaches to the base of this camera. You want to take your battery out. Attach this. And uh, it comes with this cable, which uh, just fits right inside where your LPE6 battery would go nice and compact and is made specifically they make this specifically to fit with this battery and keep it in place next they custom make these holders for your solid state drives if you're using a t5 card or something equivalent to that and not using a cfast or an sd card which i prefer not to use those right you're going to attach this to the top of the camera and you're going to want to make sure when you put this in you're going to want the the port to be on this side, so the cable's gonna come out to the left of the camera. Uh, one thing you're gonna want with this rig, uh, just because of how the cables bend and you don't wanna damage a port, is um, with your, uh, your USB-C, you're gonna want to get these little right angle um, connections, USB-C, and I've included a link to these as well, the ones I got. That way you're able to kinda keep stress off of the, the port to not break the USB-C connection on the solid state drive or on the Blackmagic. So when you put these in, you're gonna to wanna to put this with the cable facing towards the towards where the lens would go. It helps later not to have that in front. And then uh, just connect that up. And that's all you need to do to get it into this housing. The next step, you're going to slowly insert this into the housing. And um, you don't wanna force it too hard because they have foam blocks that helps guide it in and if it goes in correctly, you'll know it'll go all the way in. There's no need to adjust it or anything. And as you can see inside, all of the buttons work. You can turn on the camera like so. Um, and <laughs> one thing you want to do before you close all this up is just to double check your settings one more time. I like to film in constant quality um, when I'm doing underwater footage just so I don't have to worry about the bit rate because there's a lot of stuff going on underwater. So you'll just want to go ahead and set all that up before you get in the water. Make sure your high frame rate set. You usually want to film at 60 frames per second so you can slow down footage. It's a lot easier since this is not a self-stabilizing camera. All right, so the next step is to put this top plate back on. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you're going to take this O-ring and uh, usually, and I've already done this before we did this video, is you're going to take a cloth, a soft cloth, and um, work its way around it to make sure it gets rid of any dirt or anything like that. Um, you're going to make sure in the inside track in here where you're going to stick this, this rubber seal that there's no dirt or anything like that. And then um, you're going to, and I've already pre-done this, you're going to want to add a little bit of silicone grease to 
just a little bit and kind of work its way around this rubber seal. It preserves the seal a little bit better and it keeps it from drying out and it also helps to seal it up just a little bit better um, on this rig. Throw the seal onto your, into this groove and then place this down. All right, now one thing to note while I'm doing this is when you put these in, you kind of want get it, to get it nice and tight, but don't do it too hard. There's not really a reason to like really force it to be hard on this because it, it does seal up pretty well. All right, now that we have this front element on, one thing that I've noticed is you don't want to, you want to make sure none of the buttons are mashed. Um, these that control the front panel of the camera, uh, because if one's mashed, like the camera screen might not turn on if it's pushing into a button some weird glitch I discovered. So you just wanna make sure all the buttons work on the camera, everything looks good, you're able to go through all the menus. All right, next is putting on the lens and uh, I gotta take the lens off of that camera first, so. Uh... All right, now that we got this lens off of that camera, let's put it on this one. So with these, you can actually buy different ports um, for different lenses. And I got this one for the Lumix 12 to 35 millimeter that I like to use, but you can get different ones. Uh, so you'll just go ahead and put your lens on. Now some of them, some of the ports do have a focus and a zoom. This one did not come with one. So I think I'm gonna try to get one, um, another a custom one built for the specific lens or even get another one for a different lens. Um, but. It works fine. I haven't had that many problems with the punch in focus that the, the Black Magic has. So you're gonna put this little ring around it, make sure it's snug, but not too far down. When you're done putting this ring around it, you're gonna take this uh, rubber seal that is also on the front end and insert it here to keep that nice and sealed. And again, you wanna do the same thing, clean it off with a old cloth and put some um, lubricant on it. When you add this lens board on, you wanna make sure that you're housing is at an angle so you're not just pushing it down into it. It keeps it from um, getting stuck and uh, ruining the threading on this port. You're going to take the cover off of it and uh, just make sure you kind of like wipe off this, and again not with a shirt, but like with a cloth and make sure it's kind of cleared of anything before you do it. Make sure that you're able to, as you can see inside, um, zoom in and out with it. You're ready to go. The first thing I like to do, since we're here at the pool, I like to go ahead and just dunk this in real quick, just like right below the surface, make sure there's no water or anything before I get into scuba gear or bring this in the water, just to make sure there's nothing wrong with it. So just gonna go ahead and dip it in, leave it in for a couple seconds, pull it out. You're gonna wanna tip it back, make sure that there's no water pooling up in there and you're all good. After that, there's some attachments that I've also linked in because they're very different with these than you would have on just normal outside the water cameras. Um, some lighting and stuff that I put on this and I'll put a link in the description for how I do that. But this is the Salty Surfing House Black Magic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and I think this also uses for the 6K. Love this underwater housing. It's been great to use. It's not too difficult to set up and it's not too big and heavy that it's hard to get into to places. I will also be doing a video reviewing the footage and how to how I use this underwater, what weighting you need to get to make this neutrally buoyant underwater and some other things in another video. But if any of you have this and I've missed anything or you have any questions about it, please let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date with all of our latest videos. Until next time, this is John Owens with Frame Voyager.